Welcome back to another episode of After Hours with Coot with an E. <laughs> I'm Alex Rosa, and with me, as you would expect, is the wonderful Ben Coot. How are we doing, man? Very good. We're in lockdown, in the house, have a nice drink. What could be better? And you're, you're back in Tallinn right now? or? Mm-hmm. So, last we talked, we was in Sydney with James. So, yeah, back in right. Tallinn, done a couple of little trips, did... Um, Cologne and Dusseldorf for the mate. Uh, did which one did you Berlin prefer? Last weekend. Not to uh, start, Dusseldorf. you know, another sibling oh, yeah. <laughs> rivalry, but which one did you prefer? Dusseldorf was very pretty because I, I yeah. was going to stay in Dusseldorf. Like, again, it's a footy trip. Where can we see the games and all that? So we got tickets for the Dusseldorf game. Mm-hmm. But, like, there was no hostels. There's like literally only, like, two hostels in the entire city. So we're like, it's uh, true. fuck. <laughs> so we ended up, like, renting a car, staying in Cologne. So, like... There's an airport as well, like Dusseldorf Visa, which is in the middle of bumfuck nowhere. Correct. So we just got the, the drift I, from the airport to Cologne and then got the train between Cologne and Dusseldorf. Got it. Yeah, I actually used to live in Dusseldorf for a while after a very misguided effort in uh, following a girl across the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> as you do. Um, but no, yeah, Dusseldorf is its a nice city, but it's pretty boring. There's not a whole lot going on. Um Oh, well, when we were there, like, we had everything going on. So it was, like, the weekend before Carnival. And oh, people well, then, sh- well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great exception. <laughs> yeah, literally everything going on at that point. <laughs> but that day to day. <laughs> day to day, it's, like, any business city. I think Cologne's pretty much yeah. the same anywhere in, like, the, like, the rural region. But, like, yeah, we, were, we, I mean, we rocked up and they were having beers in the streets, fans from each team, people mm-hmm. in Lederhosen drinking and dancing and doing all that German shit. All that German shit that Germans do. <laughs> yep. That's pretty dope. Um, so how long were, so you just kind of went between the two cities, Cologne and Dusseldorf, or? Yeah, so like we had, we rocked up in Cologne one night. There's, I have to give one warning to all travelers, is that like, the beer size is not that big stein you want in Germany that you think, oh, we sit nope. down together at a beer hall. Nope. It's Point 200 mil glasses. Yeah. <laughs> So that was a bit yeah. of a concern on the first night. We just like rock up. I've been driving on the autobahn, had a couple of beers in Tallinn, but of course, stay safe, drive safe. It's all fine. Zero point five. Yeah, we do not recommend drunk driving for no, the listeners no, out no, there. No. <laughs> but again, you have a couple of beers. You rock up at the airport at eleven thirty. There's the stress of finding the car. Then there's the stress of like literally driving on the opposite side of the road that you're used to, through like this industrial sector, in the right hand lane, kind of like nice and easy, nine to right. eleven take it easy take it easy take it easy and you get to the hostel and you're like oh fuck yes really good hostel but like it's kind of a little bit more on the bigger side nice bar and all you want is a big fucking beer and there it is this kind of shot glass of a beer right <laughs> and you're just like fuck. uh did they uh did they are, are they still doing the coaster thing oh they love their coasters yeah hang on which well, no, I meant like no, so like, uh, at least in my experience, when I was in Dusseldorf, uh, which is, for the listeners out there who don't know the difference beer-wise, Dusseldorf is the only place in the world that brews alt beer, which is an older style of beer, typically kind of more closely associated with like an amber or like a darker sort of malty, um, like a dunkel beer. So, it's, you know, just like a darker sort yeah. of light beer. Not a stout or anything, not like a Guinness, um, but like it's just referred to as alt beer. Cologne is notorious for the Kolsch, which is actually in a lot of, uh, like, craft breweries and just, like, gastro pubs and whatever, like, all over the world now. Kolsch is sort of taking the world by storm as a very sort of light, refreshing, crispy, uh, similar to a Pilsner, but with more, like, uh, with ale hops, so it has a different, like, flavor profile, so that's another super common varietal. But the two cities, uh, between the two of them, are literally stuck in and at, like, a war, um, you know, which beer is better? Um, soccer rivalries aside, the beer is kind of where that big, uh, where that big rivalry really sits. So in both cities, 
Uh, typically what they end up doing is like you end up rocking up and, you know, you ask for a beer and they're going to give you a culture in Cologne. They're going to give you an alt in Dusseldorf. So instead of having to order one every single time, you just drink. And when your empty glass gets set on the coaster, they pick it up and refill it. And then they just do a little tick mark on the coaster. Yeah, so they, just, just, they were doing that the whole time. And yeah, yeah. Like you're right exactly <laughs> about the Alt beer versus the Kolsch beer. Both are yeah. delicious. I'd, I'd take both any day of the week. But it I mean, is a yeah. bit of an interesting thing because it is like almost like a shot size given how quickly you can drink beer. Well, right. Because, yeah, I mean, 0.2 liters for the, uh, for the American listener out there. <laughs> and we're going back to conversions because it's something that 0.2 liters is essentially like... It's less, well, it's about the size of a tall Starbucks coffee. So a, a small Starbucks coffee is about the size of uh, two. But I think the tall actually in the States might be 0.3. Um, so it might actually be bigger than a 0.2 pour um, <laughs> of a Kolsch beer. <laughs> But yeah, the beer aside, well, actually, the funny thing is, so in this city of like 200 mil beer, 200 mil beer, 200 mil beer, like you go to the footy and like we saw uh, Fuck Düsseldorf versus Gladbach, you know, 30, I think 30 euros, got good tickets, 50,000 people. You go for, yeah, and you get the half liter beer and you get the fucking pretzel and you're in heaven. Yeah, of course. Who won? Oh, well, we had a really good run. So Düsseldorf lost 4-1. A lot of goals, good atmosphere, all that shit. Sure. And then we went back to the Cologne and we're like, oh, fuck. So the next day, we tried to get tickets for the Cologne Bayern Munich game. So that's like one team of 110,000 members versus right. a team of, a, you know, over a quarter of a million members. And you're like, oh, fuck. So we tried to get <laughs> tickets online. We got ripped off one day. So we like lost the money there. But actually, uh, two days ago, we got the money back. So fucking bonza. Oh, there you go. Nice. Um, but they have this thing of like the ticket resale. So you literally like, you can go to the stadium, which is what we did, wait in a line, and it's a lucky dip. So members sell back the tickets at like 90% price, so they get some money back. And mm -hmm. if you rock up and you're lucky enough to be at the right time in the line, you get a ticket. So we ended up getting tickets for like, I think, 40 euros each for this like quite a big game. To see Bayern Munich? Dude, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 40 euros That's each sick. to see Bayern Köln, so like two of the Worth biggest it. clubs numbers-wise. Yeah. And again, beer, pretzel, fucking good. Right, yeah. Absolutely. What more is there to life than beer, pretzel, and footy? And then we was followed up. Like we went back, had a couple of beers, went around town, tried to find somewhere on a Sunday. It was a bit like eh, but we did find mm. this amazing little. Um, it, it's a LGBT friendly kind of little karaoke bar run by this Thai bloke. It was fucking amazing. Like we so rocked really up once. Like your scene. Oh, look, the, the scene that a, a straight male who's got a girlfriend, a committed relationship, can go and just, like, sing shit to, songs, dude, is, not be, like... This is, this is a Wanderfunk production, yeah. dude. No, no one's going to judge you for your lifestyle, man. It's quite all right. It is fine to be free and merry. Be who you are. Don't hide yourself. Oh, no, is this great, though? They had, this, um, they had the Saigon mm -hmm. beer, and I hadn't seen Saigon beers outside Saigon? Vietnam. Yeah. Really, yeah. Huh. So I smashed those, sung some songs. It was a nice house. Everyone was welcome. This the guy behind the bar like, was sweet as fuck. Like, was the karaoke style like kind of uh, like I guess more Western like open style? Like it wasn't like the rooms, right? Like Korean style. No, it wasn't it was Korean like, style. It was like at the bar. Like you almost sit at the bar and sing karaoke right. with everyone. And then but it to was like, like the whole to everybody that's at the bar, right? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So there was one okay. guy singing Thai karaoke, another guy singing Russian, German, English. It was great. But it was like the one time I got to speak German because the the guy behind the bar, I think he only knew Thai and German. So we okay. had to have this very yeah. awkward, broken conversation of German. You don't know how to speak Thai? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you need to get your shit together. <laughs> it leaves me tongue-tied. <laughs> I hate you. I love you so much. I hate you, but I love you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> So, are you trying to tell me that you're going to become a dad soon? What is this joke? <laughs> I've been saying them since I was seven, so... Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, that's, it's my new podcast, The World's Greatest Pun-Off. Like... <laughs> <laughs> the World's Greatest Pun-Off. I feel like there's a, probably a pun that you can make into the title that would be probably a little bit better. Next episode, I'll, I'll come back with one for you. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Um, okay, so then you did Dusseldorf and Cologne, and you also did Berlin, right? Yeah, like, 
last weekend, so just before everything started shutting down across the time, uh, mm. girlfriend hadn't seen Berlin, so it's like, okay, let's go for a couple of days to Berlin. Nothing crazy, no, like, super party, but, like, just enjoy ourselves. How, uh, how cheap were the tickets to get out there? Uh, Talent to Berlin uh, Schoenfeld was, like, 32 euros, so pretty pretty good return. Top notch. And unlike uh, London, Schoenfeld is not that far out of the way on the metro. Uh, Schoenfeld's like what you'd normally expect of it, like 30 minutes. Like, right. Uh, then we went to the center, and then like we stayed near Alexanderplatz, really nice Airbnb. Super Almost. alternate Airbnb, like it was a very kind of like burlesque theme, but like they thought of everything, like the guy who runs it, like there's a fridge full of beer, like drink whatever you want for free, all the amenities in the really? bathroom, like toothbrushes, razors, like whatever you want. Like it was really generous and really nice, so that always like it really like boosts your stay if you stay somewhere nice. Absolutely. I mean, if you want to give him a shout out, a recommendation, we can include that link in the description. Yeah. Free beer. I mean, what stay is well, dude. Especially now with this whole coronavirus thing, like that would be that would because so many few people are traveling. Like prices on everything is going mm. down, but also throwing in free beer. I feel like that's that's it's a it's a winner apart. if you could be guaranteed to come back to your own country. Um, right. We've just, in our country, like Estonia, like they've just shut down the borders pretty much. All the planes are stopping, the regional airlines stopped. So it's like the girlfriend's like friends are stuck in Mexico at the moment, and other friends are stuck in like Singapore and stuff. So oh, really? it's a gamble, but there are worse here. places to be stuck. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, right now in Panama, um, the restrictions are pretty low. There's only been 36 confirmed cases. Mm. Um, so everything's still pretty low and whatever. It doesn't seem to be getting out of hand because uh, it was like... Talk to me next week. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Right, exactly. I mean, there was... The, was it Italy just came out yesterday. It was like, I forget what... I think it was like a minister of public health or something came out and was like, don't do what we did. <laughs> like, yeah. take this more seriously. Um, but yeah, I mean, coincidentally, this week we're actually scheduled to do uh, a week by the beach. Um, nice. Nice. So, I mean, it's only like an hour and a half away, so it's not going to be going far. Um, just taking a bus down. So hopefully nothing too crazy. But, I mean, even the um, the grocer downstairs, like the guy behind the counter, he's wearing his mask, gloves switched out, you know what I mean? Everyone's taking the precautions. So I'm kind of hoping that the worst is over, but at the same time, I'm also kind of hoping that the worst is yet to come and that the United States falls into just apocalyptic chaos. Um <laughs> Because that would be, first of all, it'd be hilarious just to see what would pop up on Facebook from all my, like, high school friends. <laughs> like, just to see. Like, oh my god, the Ravagers, the <laughs> Ravagers, they've come for me. <laughs> Click, like, all right, that'd be dope. Um, but secondly, then I could just laugh and laugh and laugh at all my friends who've never traveled. And just be like, oh shit, uh, not that I saw it coming, because I definitely didn't, but I'm just going to say that I did. <laughs> just go with it. Well, like, you know how, like, in every, like, dystopian future movie that's based in, like, England, it's always referred to as, like, the colonies or, like, the former United States, like, yeah. after it all went to shit, but that's always, like, pretty consistent, like, um... Are you writing a Fallout sequel, like, Fallout 5, you're just giving <laughs> the, the, the leaks right now? <laughs> pretty much, I mean, that's exactly, like, you know, when the virus took over, like, we had to quarantine ourselves, was, like, you know what I mean, the, isn't that, like, the basic premise of, a? Uh, 28 days later without the zombies yet right without the zombies but what the premise was like originally like oh no the states has fallen like that's how the movie opens yeah like the united states is in chaos like and then like the president signs off like god bless you and like ah <laughs> that was like the best like that's the best like horror slash gore film i've ever watched and then it, like 28 weeks later was afterwards and it was like eh. yeah it's a yeah. little bit like hollywood -ed. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's the problem. Once something gets too good and then they're like, oh, let's take all the things that made this one thing good, all these especially unique components, and then smash them all together, then it's like, eh. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, have you ever, like, you know Subway, like Subway sandwiches? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, so they're not a sponsor and fuck them. But anyway, when you get a Subway sandwich, like, you think it'd be a great idea to, like, get all of the toppings, you know what I mean? That's a horrible but, idea. That is a horrible right. idea. <laughs> well, I know. Like, independently, and depending on what, like, sandwich base you're getting, like, you know, some toppings are obviously better than others, right? Like, if you get, like, you know, the, like, Italian sub that they have or whatever, all right, you know, lettuce, tomato, onion, standard, maybe some pickles on there, little acidity, why not, you know? 
oregano, maybe some mayo, olive oil, pepper, done, right? Standard. But like, you know, they also have like black olives, which like might work out, and sometimes they do, Ooh. sometimes they don't. You know what I mean? They have. Like, I'm a fan of the Subway black mayos. olives. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to say that the, the black olives is like with some mayo. It's just like yes, and then you get For the sure. lettuce combined, and you make these perfect combinations. But it's like. Right. You add that one little bit too much, and it becomes the Tower of Babel. Like God looks down and says, "No, that's going to taste fucking awful." Exactly right, and that's that's exactly what I mean. Like with a lot of the movies that like get good, it's like, oh, it was like just the right amount of every little bit. Die Hard, Exhibit A. These Die, Die Hard, Exhibit A. <laughs> How many did they like? They're, they're still making them, aren't they? Like was the last one? Like, they stopped. There was the weird the Die fifth hard? one. Oh yeah, fuck, that was awful. They had something like How a plane and a bridge. I think there was five. Five? Last count? That was Die Hard 3. Die Hard 4.0? Was there a 4.1? Yeah, there's some <clears> bullshit. <throat> like, they started doing, like, when Apple, like, you know, that cool, like, period of everything. They like, oh, 0.0. Like, even yeah. in Australia, we had, like, Vegemite 2.0 or something. And it's just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Okay, so Die Hard has officially had six iterations. <clears throat> there was Die Hard, the original. Then there yeah. was Die Hard uh, 2. Then Die Hard with a Vengeance. Then Live Free or Die Hard in 2007. A Good Day to Die Hard in 2013. <laughs> and it looks like they're coming out with another iteration just called McLean. Oh, yeah, I heard <clears throat> McLean. It's just one of those ones that's in like studio purgatory till someone yeah. buys the rights. Yes, so ex exactly right. They took one good thing and then kept on trying to do the same thing. I will say the only time that it has worked out, at least from in my opinion, has been the uh, Fast and Furious franchise. <laughs> Does it get better though? Well, see, here's, like, so here's, we keep here's watching. It's so okay. We keep watching, but it doesn't get better. What it does get is like more spectacular every time. So you know what I mean? So I do. Like, okay, so like the first, like the first movie, you know, all right, Paul Walker's character, who I already forgot his name, and I watched every movie like fifty times, uh, and Vin Diesel's character Toretto, uh, you know, it's about their epic battle back and forth, right? Okay, cool. Then he's a cop, he's a villain. It all makes sense. The story is very cohesive. Then you know, the cop is like, oh, maybe he's not a bad guy after all. And lets them ride off into the sunset. That's where it should have all ended. You know what I mean? Like, all right, cool, street racing. Like, yeah, it's the middle of the 2000s. You know, Japanese chicks in tiny skirts around pink cars. Like, let's this go. Honda you know what I mean? The Honda S2000. The Honda S2000. Yes. Suki, right? Was that her name? I don't even know the name. I just remember the car. That was like my almost, name for speed car, man. Yeah, the, the, yeah, just the Honda S2000 with the pink... Uh, with the pink kit and like the fucking knight on the side with pink neons under and the big the side ass skirts, the yeah. lights, oh, and then the so Supra good. that ended up being super dope or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was perfect for its time and it should have stayed in that bubble. Instead, then... it continued on to it towards its forty. Like, what was the one with the runway? Someone calculated so the runway is approximately twenty six miles or forty two kilometers long. Oh, like, because of how <laughs> they just kept going. <laughs> that's the one where they have to like evacuate on like a military cargo ship right something like that yeah i forget why they have to do that but that's it's, it's i think it's not in the fate of the furious is where they blow up the russian submarine that was the um, one after that one wasn't there right that was fate of the furious so you're talking about f7 i think seven yes the seventh one i think is that cargo plane because like that's after they'd introduced... Oh, no, six. Uh, six, Jason... six is the runway. Fuck. Six is the runway? Yeah. Because that was shortly after they introduced uh, Jason Statham, right? Yeah, that was a good ad. Like, if anything, always add yeah. more Statham. <laughs> I have been saying this for years. I have seen every one of his movies, even, like, the shittiest ones. Have you ever seen a movie called... Um... I think it's called Please Home. Please say Crank. Oh, uh, and The Home. What? What the, fuck's, what the fuck's The Home? No, no, no. It's a movie called Home or something like that. Uh, let me just double check that it is that one. Uh, but no, so the, the basic premise of the movie, um, 
is that like he has to like protect a child. You know what I mean? Oh no, it's called Home Front. So it's Jason Statham like gallivanting around as a fake American, but he's essentially this like dude who's been who has to take care of this kid who has some particular value, and then he ends up, you know, the kid has no parents, and then eventually, you know, they kind of end up doing the kid and adult mm-hmm. version of like falling in love with each other, right? But it's like, you know, dad and daughter, not like not like the stuff you see on, you know, the porn. Forty two percent on wrong tomatoes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's pretty fucking awful. I've seen literally all of them though. Uh The Meg, another fantastic, terrible one. Crank two, I would say honestly, better than Schindler's List by the the, the re cranking or like <laughs> the re cranking. So have you wait? Have you seen the Crank movies? I saw, I saw Crank one. I didn't know they did a second one. Oh no, they did Crank two, and it was called I think Crank two High Voltage. Is that what it was called? <laughs> That's a shocking uh, name. Oh, dude! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> yep, it was just called Crank High Voltage, but it's Crank two. <clears throat> yep, I even saw Transporter three, dude. Like, <laughs> I've seen them all. Um, but okay, so obviously, for those of you who don't know the Crank series. Crank was originally, oh, he got injected well, with the Beijing cocktail, whatever the ads fucking went off on. But essentially, if he didn't keep his adrenaline up, his heart would fail. And as some sort of, like, you know, criminal, like, I forget what it was. Was he a hitman? Was I forget what he was before he had to go find this cure. But essentially, I think he was, like, an assassin for, like, some organization. Then at the beginning of the movie, they capture him. They inject him with this, like, Beijing or Bangkok cocktail, whatever. That's supposed to stop your heart and kill you. But he found this loophole where if you keep your adrenaline up, uh, you can, like, you know, keep your heart going so you don't die. But you have to continuously do progressively outrageous shit to keep your uh, heart rate up. So it's like skydiving and doing, you know, all the all this shit, right? So that's the premise of one. Eventually, he ends up finding some sort of love interest for a couple of minutes. And that's a funny sex scene. And then that's that, right? That was on the race course bolts. as well. What? That was the sex scene of the race course. Yes, yeah, where he's having sex in front of an uh, entire stadium full of race uh, horse race uh, attendees. So the premise of Crank 2, because at the end of Crank 1, you think he dies because he falls off of a roof. You remember that? Kind so of. The be- yeah, so he gets thrown <laughs> off of a roof, like he finds the cure, he like falls in love, but then they still get him anyway because he's still a bad guy and he gets thrown off a roof. But what ends up happening is that, so, you know, Crank 1 ends um, there. He's on the pavement, just splatting, bleeding out. Crank 2 opens with him actually being alive. (gasps) Shocker there. They rush him to a hospital, and uh, they put him on, like, the equivalent of, like, a rudimentary pacemaker, because I guess he's in some, like, third world country or something. But it has a battery, and the only way to keep him alive (laughs) is to keep this battery charged. So he keeps doing stupid shit like licking car batteries. He ends up electrocuting himself by like sticking his finger in a socket, and it like helps charge the battery or some shit. Like it's just, it's this whole thing. At one point, and this is hilarious to me, they because they needed a sex scene. He ends up fucking some Japanese chick against a mailbox while a passing tour bus drives by. <laughs> <laughs> And eventually it gets sorted out, and I forget how or why. But epic movie, again, like Schindler's List, beats it out, easy. Shawshank Redemption, trash compared to Crank 2. Um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, garbage. Uh, That is garbage, but I'm I'm just going to leave that for another day. Oh, you think Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is garbage? Of course it's garbage. It's like nostalgia. Like, have you seen South Park with the member berries? Like, yeah. Remember yeah. this? That, that is literally that whole movie. It's like, remember, remember yeah. the you know, 70s? Remember this? Remember that? It's just like, cool. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Thank, thank you for reminding me. That was right, very yeah. nice. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> welcome to Movie Nights with Alex and Ben. Oh my God, should we? we sh- oh my God, we should just do like a two hour, like, all right, we're going to pick the shittiest movie on Netflix, watch it side by side, just talk shit throughout the whole thing. Do they have Gremlins thing. 2 yet on Netflix? Gremlins 2 is up there with Crank 2. It's one of the best. <laughs> also, Leprechaun in Space would probably be like top three movies of all time. Crank What's 2. The Attack of the Killer Tomatoes or Tomatoes for the American audience. <laughs> Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. 
you've never heard of Connect. Okay, that's we can leave I a only, link to the trailer. No, 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 I only know that as like a cartoon series. <clears throat> oh no, that was a live action film. Stop. What? Yeah. Or that, you know what? Why don't we? Why don't we just make this turn this into a Jason Statham podcast? <clears throat> I mean, I don't mind rewatching all of these fantastic movies. The bold like and Blitz, the beautiful. I mean, chaos, <laughs> war in the name of the king, safe, which is exactly like Homeland but Asian. <laughs> to be fair, on my list of Netflix to rewatch is uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, which is like the best gangster film based in England that you'll be able to watch. Uh, what about Snatch? Oh, snatch is <laughs> close. It's not quite Lockstock. Lockstock is the OG of um, Guy Ritchie. But films. Snatch has Jason Statham in it. So, so does Lockstock. I, I mean, <laughs> more films so? for our review list. <laughs> <laughs> and Brad Pitt as the infamous Pikey. <laughs> I more would love to be able to do that. could ever account for. It's fantastic. Ah. <laughs> oh. The tangent continues. I mean, this whole thing is a tangent. That's the whole point. This is why it's after hours. You know, it's just, what would we talk about if we were like at a bar? <laughs> Probably this. True. But we wouldn't only be allowed at bars, get, so. <laughs> only I would get progressively more wasted, and then eventually start going off on tangents about American politics about something or other. You're not the one drinking here. <laughs> uh. Ooh. You know what? Let me go down to the shop and grab a beer. That's literally downstairs. Uh, let's should we take a pause here and I'll come back with a beer? Sure. All right. Cool.